I'm going clear. I'm going clear right now, and I need to be in the corner of my room in order to do this. Because I just saw Going Clear, Scientology, and the Prison of Belief by Alex Skivney, based on a book by Lawrence Wright. And I thought it was an excellent documentary. My girlfriend didn't. She fell asleep. She thought it was okay. But whatever. Fuck her for the moment. Let's talk about this documentary. I liked it. And if you're a Scientologist, you probably didn't like it. Because they've released statements saying this documentary is bullshit. It's not based on truth. These people in these documentaries are lying. And that's their stance. But I don't think that the people in the documentary are lying. Because they're former Scientologists who don't necessarily hate Scientology. A lot of them still believe and some of the basic principles, but they're unhappy with the way the church is going under David Miskovich, who is the new head of Scientology at the moment. So a lot of people are disillusioned by what they once believed in because of certain things about the religion, which some call a cult, which is up for debate. What you think a cult is, what a cult really is. Do you think Scientology is a religion? Well, I guess the IRS gets to decide that, because in 1993, they said, yes, it is a religion. So technically, it's a fucking religion. But if you want to call it a cult, I guess you can. And you'll piss off some Scientologists. All right. Let's talk about L. Ron Hubbard. Who is L. Ron Hubbard? He's the Joseph Smith of Scientology. He's the Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father of Scientology. He created it. He started it. Without L. Ron Hubbard, there would be no Scientology. So we have him to thanks. Thank you, L. Ron, wherever you are. But how does one man start a religion? How? Well, he started off as a science fiction writer. He wrote fantasy, science fiction books early in his life in the 1930s. He wrote for Pulp Fiction magazines. He had an amazing imagination. He was incredibly creative. And he wrote great books. Later on, his books became movies. I don't know if you ever saw Battlefield Earth with Mr. John Travolta, fellow Scientologist. But that was well after he died. But he wrote amazing stories. He also was in the military. In the military, he claims to be wounded and blinded. But if you look at his reports, he only had mild conjunctivitis and arthritis. But he used his injuries from the war in Scientology, in Dianetics. He said that Scientology, Dianetics, helped him overcome his disability. What is Dianetics? Dianetics laid the foundation for Scientology. Dianetics is a metaphysical relationship between your mind and your body. The mind is broken down to three parts, the reactive, somatic, and analytical. The goal of Dianetics is to get rid of that reactive part of your mind because that's where all your negative experiences in your life and your past lives are held. The technique they use to get rid of this is called auditing. In these auditing sessions you have, you'll sit down with the person, they'll ask you a series of questions, and this will all be recorded and documented. Every person in Scientology has a file cabinet or more, a whole room full of auditing sessions, because that is one of the things they do in Scientology, is they audit, and you continually audit. You don't stop. That is one of the things in Scientology that is part of their religion. It's pretty much like therapy, but they don't like therapists and psychiatrists, even though, ironically, it is kind of like therapy. But that's what they do. Now, it's controversial because they keep all these files. So some say that they use these files as blackmail if somebody tries to leave the church. And that's one of the things they talked about in the documentary with John Travolta. They said, oh, he can't leave because he might be blackmailed if he did because we have so much dirt on him. And that's one of the things the documentary alluded to. So Dianetics was the foundation that led to Scientology. In 1951, L. Ron Hubbard introduced the E-meter, which is the electropsychometer. Now, this was used to help with auditing. This was one of the tools used in the auditing sessions. This meter is used for auditing, which detects changes in a person's mind. Dianetics was a bestseller. It was a hit. 
He conducted Dianetic sessions where he traveled around the country and spoke to groups of people and held auditing sessions. But eventually, Dianetics went bankrupt, which led to Scientology. Because Elrond wanted to start a movement. He wanted to start a religion. And in 1953, he did that. Scientology was born. Oh, Elrond. Oh, Elrond. And he was a leader of a religion. Dianetics started it all. But in Scientology, Elrond expanded what was in Dianetics to make it more concrete. As the years went on, he added more and more to this religion. One of the things he added was the story of Xenu, the galactic overlord, who took bodies, put them in volcanoes, blew them up, and then Thetans attached to the bodies. And you don't learn that until you're an OT3 level. That's one of the controversial things in Scientology, because people in the church will deny this, which is pretty crazy when you think about it, because if you ask a Christian or a Muslim what they believe, they'll tell you what they believe. But if you ask a Scientologist, they'll deny it. It's a secret. It's a secret religion, because you can only get this information when you get to that level. Although it's been publicized because people who've left the church have spilled the beans and they're like, we don't get it, this doesn't make sense. How is the earth 75 million years old with people who had cars and all these things? Like it, People didn't get it, it didn't make sense. So a lot of people started questioning this and they left the church after they gained this knowledge. But the church denies it, church members have denied this. They're like, Zeno who? Aliens what? If you look at interviews and past documentaries, the BBC did a documentary where they asked celebrities these questions and they're like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. That's usually the answer you'll get from a Scientologist is what? I don't know what you're talking about. I've never heard of that. That's crazy. No. They'll deny things that are in their religion, even though they know it's true. I, that's one thing that I don't get about Scientology. It does... It just doesn't make sense to me. In 1967, the IRS removed the tax-exempt status from Scientology because they viewed it as a commercial venture that just made L. Ron Hubbard and his family extremely rich. L. Ron hated the IRS. N.W.A. said, fuck the police. L. Ron Hubbard said, fuck the IRS. He was being persecuted from people left and right everywhere. So he got the hell out of here and he hit the seas. He created the Sea Organization. In the Sea Organization, he explored the past, present, futures. He discovered new things, past things, everything. But the Sea Organization was met with a lot of criticism because of the way the people on board, his clergy, were treated. People weren't being fed. People had to work hard, arduous hours. They had to scrub the floor for hours. They were being mistreated. He created this thing called ethics where he would push people overboard if they did a bad auditing job. There was abuse everywhere going on. But you won't hear about it from Scientology or Scientologists. They will deny this. Scientology kept getting more and more popular. It started expanding. They added more buildings. They added a celebrity center in Los Angeles because we all love celebrities. And they knew that celebrities would be great spokespeople for their religion. John Travolta was one of their early poster boys. And in this documentary, they say he didn't leave the religion because he's offered some protection from some of his controversies, and they also know a lot about him. They know everything about him. So him leaving the church, they would start putting all this stuff out. So that's the reason for him not to leave, and also he has protection when he's with the church because they have an excellent PR, tons of attorneys to help fight some of these discrimination cases against Travolta. Another poster boy was Tom Cruise. We all fucking love Tom Cruise. The firm, hard dick, well no, that was the porno version. He did the firm, he did Mission Impossible, and he's a Scientologist. He can do it all. And Tom Cruise is definitely one of their poster boys. He's like this with the new head, Mr. David Miscavige. But Tom Cruise started growing apart when he was with Nicole Kidman. And the church was kind of uh, a little iffy with her because her dad was a famous psychologist. And they could see that Tom was starting to grow apart from the church. So they started tapping her phones, invading her privacy. They wanted to make her look like a bad person so that Tom could keep their children because they wanted to keep Tom Cruise. That's what this church does, supposedly. They want to keep certain members. 
And if you leave, they'll make you look bad. They have you followed. They'll kill your cats. They'll do terrible things to you. Supposedly. They'll deny it all. They'll say, no, we don't do that. But that's what these documentaries show. Going clear. And they've done other documentaries. BBC did an excellent one that I love. They're both very good. Very similar, too. This one has more interviews. This one has a little bit more. It's more recent. In 1986, L. Ron Hubbard died. Oh my god, it's so sad. 1986, L. Ron Hubbard died. <sighs> and almost immediately afterwards, David Miscavige took over as the head. Oh, thank you, David. We love you. Praise David Miscavige. L. Ron Hubbard spent the later years of his life still fighting the IRS because Scientology wasn't classified as a religion. Well, David Miscavige, he took care of that because they declared war on the IRS. Supposedly, they started following some of the people, getting dirt, going to parties, getting information, and eventually, in 1993, the IRS caved. And Scientology was officially a religion. Yes, yes, praise Xenu? No, fuck it, whatever. So Scientology was officially a religion. David Miscavige is now the head of Scientology. And he's doing things the David Miscavige way. Which is similar to L. Ron Hubbard, but also different. And some people claimed that he abused them, mistreated them, hurt them, beat them, and they just couldn't put up with it anymore, so they left. That he would play terrible games, musical chair, he would torture people mentally and physically, and they couldn't take it. So this documentary is full of people telling their stories and giving reasons as to why they left this religion. And all these people are being labeled as liars. Every single one of them. They're saying, oh, all these people that left, yeah, they're liars. They're just trying to slander us. They're, they're giving bullshit. That's not true. We don't do any of this stuff. And who knows, right? One of those people is former PR for Scientology, Mike Reinder. He was in charge of their PR. He had videos that would go back years where he was defending the church, saying all these things. And then years later, when he's no longer in the church, he's saying, yeah, I was lying. They told me to say that, etc. So he's part of this documentary, and also he's in the one in the BBC. You should check them both out. Make up your mind. Maybe all this stuff I said got you excited about Scientology. You're like, yeah, Dianetics, three parts of the mind, that sounds cool. And for some people, it still is. Even people who left the church actually still like some of the aspects of Scientology, and they think it helps. Who knows? It might. I don't know. I've never used an e-meter. I don't fucking know. I've never tried it. But you know what? I'm open-minded, right? Are you open-minded? What do you think of Scientology? Do you think it's a cult? It's technically a religion because it's labeled a religion, so it's a religion, right? All religions do crazy shit. So is Scientology any crazier? I've fucking gone as clear as I can. I don't know if I can go any clearer. Fuck, you make up your mind. And please don't sue me, Scientology, come on. I'm not saying that any of this stuff is true. I don't know. I'm just going by what I read, what I see, this documentary. So, peace and love.